I'm Kevin Carmichael, product manager here at Lakeshore Cryotronics, and today I'd like to do a demonstration of the M91 Fast Haul Measurement Controller. The M91 is an all-inclusive haul measurement instrument. It combines a voltage source, current source, voltage and current measurement, switch, and analysis all in a single unit. This allows us a very easy platform for integrating an existing measurement or as the basis of a new haul measurement system. I used the term fast haul earlier. Fast haul refers to technology that we have uh, built into the system. It provides us two main benefits. First benefit is that it extends our mobility range three orders of magnitude on the low end. So we're, instead of being limited to about one centimeter squared per volt second, we're now down at 10 to the minus three centimeters squared per volt seconds on haul mobility. The other advantage is it allows us to avoid having to do field reversal on our DC step. So we can essentially do a complete measurement at zero field and then with just one either positive or negative magnetic field to do the haul voltage step. Both of those are, are great time savers and will come into play. We'll show you a little bit about that when we get making the measurement. In order to do the demonstration today, we've included the instrument along with our tabletop haul measurement system. So the M91 is also sold in a configuration for a tabletop system, but the M91 also stands on its own in terms of being, in, being able to be integrated with either a superconducting magnet or electromagnet of any type. So. Um, I've just included the tabletop system today to uh, use the sample holder and magnet system for doing the demonstration. Now I'd like to show you the back panel of the M91. We'll show you how we have this connected. Okay, now that we have the instrument turned around, let's take a look at the back panel connections. On the power side, we have a universal input power supply. So the mains coming in are between 90 and 220 VAC. We have two uh, communication connections. We have a USB-B connection or a Ethernet connection for going to the computer. And then we also have a USB-C connection uh, to help us pull data off um, with, a, say, a thumb drive. Uh, on the measurement side, what we have are these six connections are all triax guarded connections. Uh, the, they're numbered one through four here in the middle. That's for a Van der Paul measurement. And then five and six are labeled here if we're going to do a haul bar. Uh, we also have some analog and digital I.O. So these are BNC connectors and we have an analog input and an analog output. Those are each plus or minus 10 volt range. And then uh, four digital inputs and four digital outputs. The digital I.O. and the analog I.O. are not specifically used in our basic measurements, but can be used to integrate the M91 with your experiment. So now that we've had a chance to look at the back panel, let's go ahead and move this back around and make some measurements. The M91 instrument comes with MeasureLink software. There are two different ways to communicate with this instrument. We have a series of Skippy commands that we can implement over either USB or Ethernet, as we said earlier. But also, we've developed MeasureLink software to really simplify the process of making a haul measurement. So let me go ahead and get that started. Now, MeasureLink is a, our system software. It applies to all of our new systems and all of also all are important instruments like the M91. What we have is the ability to develop drivers for not only our own instrumentation, also third-party instrumentation. We can build those using scripts into nice sequences of measurements, and it's a very, very flexible system, but it's also very simple to use out of the box. So without spending too much time on measure, measure link itself, this is the monitor panel. The monitor panel shows you what measurements you have for this M91 demonstration measurement. We're going to have the 
M91 fast haul controller and it's on. And then I have a permanent magnet driver that's on also, and that'll control, allow us to control, easily control the status of the magnet, whether it's in zero Tesla position or it's, it's one Tesla position. Okay, so to make a measurement here, what we're going to do is come to the sequence panel and under the measurements, I'm going to go to M91 and select the multipurpose Hall effect analysis. Okay, we get a couple of measurement screens that come up here. This one is preferences. It defines a directory to save data to and what data we're saving along with a sample ID if you want it. Also, we have uh, the units here, whether it's in CGS or SI. So we're just going to leave it at CGS. Here. On this uh, group, we have standard resistance and high resistance. The M91 comes with a standard resistance range up to 10 mega ohms. The high resistance option is the M91-HR model, and that one goes up to 200 giga ohms. This can be upgraded after the purchase. Also, we have a sample thickness parameter here. You can either leave it not specified, in which case the resistance, uh, resistivity and carrier concentrations will be reported as sheet concentrations, or you can put in a value for the thickness and it will carry, do a bulk carrier concentration and uh, report the resistivity in ohm centimeters. Now these other parameters, I'll leave alone. These are defaults for the blanking time or the switching, you know, basically a settling time after the switches are arranged and a compliance voltage. So here in standard resistance, we are sourcing current. So our compliance voltage, it's only a 10 volt maximum with the M91. So that's appropriate for most things, uh, not a concern, but if you do have a lower compliance voltage that you want, you can specify it there. Okay, so now I'll hit start and I get four additional screens. Typical hall analysis, we'll do a contact check resistivity check and a fast haul analysis. One of the nice things that the M91 also has is the ability to do an optimization. So I'm going to go ahead and select that first. What the optimization does is it runs a series of contact checks under different excitation values. It's going to look at all the currents and choose the best current to excite at and it's also going to then optimize the blanking time. So all of those things will be set automatically. And then I'll also go ahead and check resistivity and hall measurements, and then we'll, we'll operate them. Okay, so really that's all I've done is done the optimization. And you notice here when I've selected resistivity and hall, when I'm doing the optimization, I'm not specifying a specific excitation value, but I'm using it linked. What the linked indicates is that whatever the best current in the contact check is determined, and that optimized value will then be used in the resistivity. and then. And then that will also be used in the hall measurement and use link in to use the resistivity. So it really becomes a very automated process. Okay, so all I need to do is really hit start here. And with the start, what you can see now is that we're doing the optimization. And now after the optimization is now complete, it did, it did the contact check. It's also going to do the resistivity. So we also have the, the data being updated in measure link. Now, Basically, the software has stopped us and the magnet driver is telling us that it needs us to move it to one, mag one Tesla. So I'll just slide my permanent magnet in and hit return to enter. Now it's going to do finish up the hall measurement. That's now complete. And I have the complete, well, yes, I'll save it. And I have the complete summary as well as all the other data files listed here. With MeasureLink, all of this information is customizable, but this summary report is very nice. It says for the contact check, it shows us the R squared values. We have a minimum 0.9999 or higher. This is the fit index of the linear fit for the contact check. So those on this sample, those are all fine. On the resistivity, it goes through and tells us the number of samples that were run. The sheet resistivity here of 281 milliohms per square, and also gives you a statistical analysis of the 10 samples, gives you the error bars, and also lists the result for A and B. So we, both A and B geometries where we're measuring along two of the edges, and then we rotate 90 and can measure the other two. So we have some indication that our sample is very symmetric. For the fast haul analysis, here, it shows us that the mobility is 73 
centimeter squared per volt second. Um, sheet carrier concentration was three times 10 to the 17th per square centimeter. Hall voltage that we measured was 650 nanovolts or 0.6 microvolts. So that's actually quite small Hall voltage, uh, and yet we were able to get very good analysis. Now, one thing I did not cover earlier is um, when we did the analysis, well, let me go back to the page. One of the pages that we reserve is our, the page that we have here showing what measurements we ran. We have a minimum signal to noise ratio that we can specify, and then also a maximum number of samples. So, so if I go back to the summary, what we did is we said we'd like to have a, sam a signal to noise ratio of at least 30 to one, and then, but, but we don't wanna go over 40 samples. Both of those are independently be able to be specified. And so what we did here, of course, on the resistivity, it's a much easier measurement. So it just ran 10 samples. Had, uh, we were over our signal to noise, no problem. Here on the fast hall, I had set it up so that it was able to run uh, 30, so it, it took 13 samples, and it actually ran and, and found all 13 of those to be p-type. Of course, as your noise band increases and your hall voltage decreases, you can get to a point where you might have an indication of it might statistically come out as n-type, maybe one out of every 10 times or one out of a few times, depending on your hall voltage. So here we can say that we all 13 of the samples that ran were able to be measured as p-type. So we have a nice analysis here. Now in addition, the other, we saved some other things here. We do have a chart showing the contact check. If our contact check had failed, one of them not being, or one of them being below 0.9999, then what we could have come back here and seen is, is the shape. We might have been passing too much current through it or the, it just might not have been a good contact. And so you can use this to kind of figure out which contacts you need to work on on your sample and make them better. In addition, we have tables. We are also producing the, this is just the IV data for each of those contact checks. And then have the same for resistivity and fast haul. Now, one of the other things that we do, and, and this is, uh, let me, let me uh, open this raw data file. One of the things we do is we capture a data file for each of the three steps. And this, this data is really just a historical record of every single measurement that was made to determine the uh, Hall voltage and our Hall analysis. And so what it has here at the set up, set up at the beginning, these are all the things that we passed into it. It has a complete list of the output. And then for each sample that was run, each of the 13 samples, it goes through and, and tells you the information, but also shows you each exact measurement that was made. So here's our, this is our positive field configuration with positive excitation. Then we have the negative excitation here, so that's showing you doing the current reversal, and we have all of the measurements completed. And this is straight down through all of the measurements. And that's, that really can be useful if you're having a problem with the measurement. Uh, the M91 isn't a real black box, so you're able to look into the data and really make it intelligent decisions about what's going wrong with your sample. So all of that is always retained. When I hit the save button after the end of the run, it saved all of that, all of those data files in one file. So that about wraps it up. Thanks for joining me for this demonstration of the M91 Fast Haul Measurement Controller. For more information, please visit our product page at www.lakeshore.com or contact sales at sales at lakeshore.com.